שלום, 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 שלום. Let's go, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everybody. שלום, שלום, שלום. Hello, Miss Sharon, Crystal, Tyson. Hello, uh, Texas is on. שלום, 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 Joy. North Carolina, Little Rock, Kimberly, Columbus, Georgia. Shalom, everybody. Latoya, uh, Lifted Hands, Indiana. Shalom, Robin, uh, Pastor Brianna Anderson, uh, Deborah. Shalom, everybody. Indiana, New Orleans. Uh, shalom, everybody. Siobhan, hello, hello, hello. What's up, Key? Uh, Little Rock, Dallas. Shalom. Mortasha, Morticia, uh, Pine Bluff, Texas, uh, Mary Holloway, what's up? Tell Jalen, I said, Jamin, we said hello. Marcia, Prophet Marcia, Lady G, R, Fresh All, yes, Tammy, Denise. Hello, everybody. Come on. If this is your first time, I want you to put a one up so we can acknowledge you and give you a shout out. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is doing. As you can tell, we are in the season of God. Is that uh, Alex, uh, first timer? Is that right? Yeah. We see you. Thank you. Miss Garrett, Tan, Ashley, good to see you. Uh, welcome to our first time. Come on in. Come on, family. Can we welcome Supernatural Family? Can we welcome our first timers? Uh, let them know we appreciate them. Uh, Memphis is on, Albany, Georgia, West Virginia. Hello, everybody. All right, I am excited. As you can tell, we have had no rest this week. I've been on 10. Pam is a first-timer. Uh, Nisha uh, is a first-timer. Come on, let's welcome Facebook. Welcome our for, uh, followers and then our first-timer, Christine. And then Periscope, you welcome those on your side. Blessings to all of you. There's a Christine um, Butler and a Christina Mason. Jenny is on, and uh, good to see all of you all. Uh, shout out to all of you all, all my supernatural family. Love you guys. Hey, we're excited. We're gonna have a, have a we're gonna have an amazing, amazing time tonight. Uh, talking about that oil crystal. Uh, is is a first timer, and um, so guess what? Uh, yeah, Nisha Davis is a first timer. So guess what? I'll be with the uh, lemonade um, brunch with Pastor Lori um, uh, Lavender on Saturday, uh, living in Victory Church, twenty eight fifty in Austin P. Uh, Christina Mason is a first timer so come on out at 11 p.m we're gonna be there and then next wednesday we'll be in baltimore baltimore merlin with um the full gospel uh conference and um and we're gonna be there next week and then august 10th we'll be in plano with our um genesis mandate group and we're gonna take the all to plano uh august 10th at noon we're gonna do our shabbat uh, and um, it's going to be phenomenal, going to be phenomenal. And then October 11, 12, 13, we're going to be in Plano. Look, if you got to crawl, walk, whatever you got to do, you need to get to Plano because it's going to be, oh, the, the visions, uh, the dreams, the prophetic words uh, that we've already been getting about Texas is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be right there at the Hilton Granite Park in Texas, Plano, Texas, the same place we have our monthly meeting. So y'all get ready. Go ahead and buy the tickets. The rooms are going fast. You want to stay at the host hotel because everything is right there at the hotel. You can be on the floor and crawl up to your room. I'm telling you, it's going to be phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. So let's let's get ready for that. Uh, by now, if you follow us at any time, you should know that we've had supernatural oil. And, uh, yeah, drop kick class. This is a drop kick class, Gina, uh, for those newcomers. It's going to be uh, fantastic. So go on I am Supernatural 2019 com, and you can register tonight and go ahead and get your room. 
it is, I'm telling you, the rooms are booking up really fast. Where uh, registration is is going fast, so you want to be a part of that. But on Saturday morning, we were in 5 a.m. prayer, and if if you've been following us, uh, Khadija said there is oil on her wall, and uh, we're going to tell you about that. Pastor Mary's on. Uh, it's 5 a.m. prayer. We had. We were praying, we were decreeing, we were repenting, we were thanking God. One of the things that I teach our people is that you do not, hey neighbor, Petrina, uh, you never go into prayer without thanksgiving. Uh, the, the Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, of course, with praise. So that means, Pastor Somerville is on. So that means you don't rush into prayer into there's thanksgiving. Pastor Mary Goffin is on. Um, and Dad Hagen taught us long, long time ago, Kenneth Hagen, we call him Dad Hagen because I was there at Rayma. He said, until your praise match your prayer, you can't expect God to do anything. Until your praise match your prayer, don't expect God to do anything. So we never go into prayer without thanksgiving. And so we were thanking God, and for about 30, 40 minutes, we were just thanking God, nothing, asking nothing, asking nothing. And that's going to be one of the uh, uh, one of your homework assignments is to really get in a posture of thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. It was when the ones who had leprosy, the nine, uh, there were ten that had leprosy, and only one came back and thanked them. And the Bible says because of that he was made whole. And so sometimes you can't get the full uh, capacity or full manifestation from God until you thank him before you see it. We always want to thank God when we see it. But can we thank him before we see it? That we believe we've already got the petitions. That what we petition God, we've already received according to Mark eleven twenty four. I believe I receive when I pray. Amen. And so you, you start praising God. And by the time you get to to start asking God, giving petitions and supplications, there's too, there's not, a, there's not uh, too much you're going to ask him for because you've already given him thanks. He wants you to tell him how good he is and, and what's, what a good job he's doing. And even though it doesn't feel like it, doesn't look like it, I don't look at the natural. So we did that for about 40 minutes. Then I just said, Holy Spirit, we decree fresh oil in this church. We decree fresh oil. And I'm telling you, oil start running everywhere. My armor bearer, Stephanie, started getting oil running down her arm. Some of you saw that. Oil started running down her arm. And then we tried to leave. We were all on the floor. We were thanking God. Oil was everywhere. And um, so we, we got our composure. Now it's about... Now, now it's about eight, uh, nine o'clock, and we've been there since five a.m. So we're all going out. Most of the people have left. We're going out. Shalom from Australia. We're going out, and the Lord told Stephanie, "Pull your shoes off," and oil start appearing on her feet. Now I know some of you got issues with this because we haven't seen the supernatural. Most of you have not seen the supernatural. We've seen all kinds of supernatural things in our church and God has to get us to the place where we're believing in the supernatural again. That we the problem with us is the reason people are disenfranchised with many church services is because it is void of power and the supernatural. We were birthed in the supernatural. Your salvation is supernatural. Jesus is a supernatural uh, son of God. God is supernatural. Holy Spirit is super. Everything, the Bible is supernatural. Everything that we talk about the kingdom of God is supernatural. Then we try to put him in the common place and just make him common and only use the supernatural or miraculous when we need it. But I did decree and declare that supernatural things are going to begin to hit your house and come to you and show up in a mighty, amazing way. So oil start coming from a feet. And I'm telling you, this kind of oil is not the olive oil that we have. It is a thick kind of honey-like oil oozing up out of her. And we go out again. 
because the glory and the power, and he told us he was coming. We have been pressing in the prayer, pressing into fasting and praying and believing God and seeing the manifestations of what God's saying, seeing bodies healed, seeing God do some phenomenal things, and what God began to show us, and what, what my rabbi friend from Israel called, and he said, he said, Sharon, do you understand that the oil represents the celestial? He says, do you understand that the oil represents the system of the abundance of God? He says, the oil represents the greatness of God coming into the earth. And so when we see the manifestation of oil, it's just, see, the manifestation of oil is for the unbeliever, not so much for the believer because we already believe. And so... We are seeing people who have not been in church for years come back to church. We are seeing the glory of God. We've got, um, I've got testimonies of people that got, has gotten healed just from the oil flowing. And um, so Sunday, I had to fly to Virginia. And uh, we were at the Bridge Church in Virginia. And some of you saw that. The oil showed up in Virginia. Glory to God. And uh, we, we saw tremendous miracles. We saw tremendous healings there. And God did some amazing things. Somebody said last Saturday they've had an all experience. Amen. And so, so Sunday... I wasn't even there. My sister and, and one of my uh, elders, my pastors, Pastor Hatchet, which is the wife to my alma bearer, he was up to preach. And he could not preach. And they prophesied. And the glory of God came in. And they all started flowing. And all appeared on my uh, on my uh, securities uh, front leg pocket. And the Lord said, put your wallet in that pocket. And within less than 24 hours, he had a supernatural deposit in his bank account. I'm telling you guys, you can't make this stuff up. God is doing some amazing things. Uh, another one of our pastors who have been with me for many, many years, all appeared on his shirt. There was oozing out of his shirt. The glory of God. Now, they didn't get out of church to 3 o'clock. It starts at 930. So they were on the floor. They could not move. God is doing some amazing things. You got to press in and believe that God wants to do something in the body. That there, uh, we've been having church too long without power and without the manifestation of the power of God. And God wants to do something so supernatural in us and through us. Now, I want you to go to 2 Kings. I want you to see some because you know I'm going to give you the word. Because some of you say, well, what the word has to say about it. I'm going to show you what the word has to say about it. And you're going to receive it. Yeah, go ahead and receive it for your church. Go ahead and receive it for your house. I decree and declare that what What's on our house will come on your house. Fresh oil, fresh impartation will happen. And you will begin to see the power and the anointing of God to do supernatural things. So Monday night, um, we had a service. It was jam-packed, standing room only. I've been receiving inboxes where people received healing that Monday night, and the oil began to flow. And can I tell you, the oil has been flowing ever since. Khadijah out in Texas received oil in her house. Uh, one of our, uh, a couple of our people here, Jen, received oil in her house. We've seen impartations of oil showing up everywhere supernaturally. It is a sign that God wants to do something. We always decree signs, wonders, and miracles. And when the signs show up, we got problems. We try to rationalize, figure it out, intellectually try to maneuver things so we can figure it out. You know, uh, people say, what is a wonder? Something that makes you wonder. And if it's a sign, it is a seal that God wants to do something in the earth. Hallelujah. Now look what it says in second as second kings second kings look at uh verse 14 uh second kings chapter 6 let's look at uh yeah 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 look at verse 13 and he said, Go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. And it was told, Behold, he is in Dothan. And the Bible says that they sent chariots and horses, a whole army, to get the prophets. And the prophet's servant, the man of the Lord, in verse 15 says, There's a host compassed about the city with horses and chariots. And he said, Servant, his servant said, Master, how 
How is this going to work out? How are we going? To, there's a whole army coming to get you. How are we going to get out of this? And this is what Elijah says to the prophet. He says, he prays. He said, Lord, I pray that you open his eyes. Now, what eyes is he talking about? Because he always he already sees uh, the horses and the chariots that come past them. He's talking about the spiritual eyes. That means there's a, a whole world, a spiritual world that is waiting to manifest in our natural world. Matter of fact, the Bible says that which we see uh, came from a ram that we cannot see according to Hebrews 1, according to Hebrews 11, 3. The Bible says that the worlds were framed by the words of God so that the things that are seen uh, came from a world that we cannot see. That means we must become practitioners of the unseen ram. Oh my God. Did you hear what I said? We must become practitioners of the unseen ram. That means I am not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what I know by the word of God. And I move in the dimension that God has called me. We walk by faith faith and not by sight. I am not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I, I feel. I'm only moved what I know by the word of God and what has been downloaded in my spirit by the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, you're getting ready to see supernatural things come into your house. You're getting ready to see supernatural things come into your ministry. You're about to see supernatural things into your bank account. I'm telling you, I have been getting supernatural deposits ever since the oil has been flowing. God has been doing some amazing things and he wants to open the eyes. Ask the Lord to open your eyes that you can see. There is a whole world. There are whole worlds. He says, now let's go over to Hebrews 11. Let's go over to Hebrews 11 because I want you to see something fantastic. And you're not going to hear this in most churches. So, so come, just go ahead and decree, Lord, open my eyes. Open my spiritual eyes. Go ahead and decree that. Just go ahead and decree because the Bible says death and life is in the power of your tongue. And it's not enough that I prophesy. You have to prophesy it out of your mouth open my eyes that I may see what is plainly there held in another dimension only I need all I need to 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 regulate my eyesight to dilate my eyesight to see in the realm of the spirit now go to Hebrews 11 come on hurry up Hebrews 11 and we're going to read this I know it's familiar but I want you to see something come on come on come on come on come on Facebook say open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes that I may see what you say out of your mouth you have to let that decree come out of your mouth yes Yes, the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hebrews 11, 1. Let's go. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Not seen. That means I believe in the unseen. Oh. The evidence of things not seen. That means faith is my evidence of things I cannot see. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3, look what the Bible says. Through faith, through faith, not just through prayer, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, the Bible says that there are worlds and they were framed by the word of God. The word worlds is aeon. It means generation. It means substance. It means worlds. So you mean, uh, so when you think about worlds, you think about Mars, you think about Pluto, and you think about Venus, you think about worlds, you think about planetary systems. But he says these worlds are framed by words. Now the way the supernatural and the spiritual dimension works is by words, and that means faith-filled words, saying the same thing that God or Father says. Death and life is in the power of tongue. Death and life is in the power of tongue. 
Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and, uh, until you get it. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And whatever you say, you create worlds. If Father created worlds, you create worlds by your words. And most of you are living in worlds of poverty because you created that world or because you have not, you have not uh, negated the words that has come against your destiny. And worlds have been created for you because you refuse to say something. And you create worlds with your words. So some of you got worlds of infirmity where sickness got a hold of you. And until you start speaking something opposite of what you created, you're going to always have what you created. You've got to say something. You have to say something. The woman with the issue of blood, she she kept hearing she's got an issue. She's got a blood condition, but she had to say something. She had to create another world. She had a world of infirmity, but she had to create another world. She kept saying within herself, if I touch his garment, I'm going to be made whole. If I touch his garment, I'm going to be made whole. What did she do? She had to create a whole nother world to, to, to quantum leap. From the world that she was living in into another dimension. Can y'all understand this? I think I need to do a, 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 a private podcast class for those who are hungry for the word of God that's ready to go. And I don't have to ward it down for you so you can understand that we were not just made for the earth. We were made to, to, to create worlds and to, to move into dimensions and realms that our mind can even comprehend. And God has made us with the ability to transport ourselves into any realm and dimension we need to, to do what he needs to do in the earth moving at full capacity yes that we come into the fullness of who God created us to the oil is the only is to only get our spiritual understanding to go to another level look what the B part says so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear that means if I'm going to create anything, it's going to come from a realm I cannot see. My God, that's why you cannot. Now go to John 6. Go to John 6. I want you to see something. Your words are going to create your word. It is the substance. The word substance is hypostasis. The word hypostasis has not been correctly defined from the Greek. It should be the word for being. That means until I be what I believe I'm going to receive, then I take what I'm going to say and God is going to begin to manifest that thing. Substance is I take the substance out of the unseen realm Put it in my spirit and I become what I'm believing for. My God. Jesus, help me. Go to John 6. Go to John 6. John 6, verse 63. Hallelujah. Come on. Fresh oil. Decree it. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh it out of your mouth. What do you want to see? Fresh oil. Fresh oil. John, my papers are sticking, sticking, my pages are sticking together. John 6, 63. Look what the scripture says. It is the spirit that quickens. Remember, there's a whole spirit world. We live in the natural world. But the spirit, anything we want to see in the natural world has to come from the spirit world. And we create out of this world, out of the spirit world, you have to live in a whole new world. Look what he says. He says, it is, Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickened. That word quicken means to make alive. Anything that's going to come to life, it's going to be by the spirit. That's why when somebody dies, we call their spirit back into their body. Because it is the spirit that makes it alive. Your finances won't come alive until you put it into a spiritual dimension. You'll keep trying to make money 
and trying to manifest money in the natural, but you have not put it in the realm or created a dimension of wealth from the spirit realm. So you go get 15 jobs and still can't make it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Look what he said. It is the spirit that makes it alive. The, fre- the flesh profit nothing. The words, listen to this. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit. They are spirit and they are life. Now we miss this. Words are spirit and life. That's why he says, don't let any evil communication come out of your mouth because you are speaking spirit and life. Now, I hope some of y'all can get this and y'all don't go religious on me or traditional words. If God created word with words, they are spirit and they are life. I wish I could demonstrate this with you. You have to see your words walking as men. And if you don't want them to walk in your world, don't say it. God created with words. They are spirit. They are life. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Why? Because what I release out of my mouth. He says what comes out of a man is what defiles him. Is you're going to speak life or you're going to speak death? Yeah, you don't sabotage, Victoria, your blessings. Is that, that's apostle. Don't sabotage your world. And don't create a world you don't want to live in. Now you understand the power of the fresh oil. We have to say, oh my God. And some of you have to go back. And destroy worlds that you've created with your words. You've got to negate them. you got to cover them with the blood. So now this is the way the Lord taught me. If you go to Luke 17, the Bible says that the disciples, the apostle asked them, increase our faith. And then he starts talking to them like, faith is a servant. He says, faith is a servant and you don't allow your servant to eat before you. You, He has to go and as a servant. Why would God, why would Jesus make a comparison or parallel faith to a servant if faith doesn't walk like words? Can I tell you something? That all is spirit and it is life and it is going to places healing, delivering. Come on. God is doing some amazing things in the earth. And you've got to say what you, you got to, if you want to see it, you got to say it out of your mind. You have been deputized by the Lord. And when you start decreeing fresh oil and you decree fresh oil and you remove the hindrance in you, doubt, unbelief, and anxiety, you're going to see the manifestations of God. And it's not, see, for the oil to show up, It means that you still need to believe God. It is a byproduct of what I believe. I don't need to see the oil to believe God. I already believe God. It's a byproduct of what we believe. Now let's let's look at this. Let's look at this. Some of you say, why, why, why signs? Why signs and wonders? Why signs and wonders and miracles? Why signs, wonders, and miracles? Why? Uh-uh, you're not gonna get this. That's why I say I got I gotta start a class for those who are ready to go. Things that I can't say um, out here uh, in, in nationally and, and international. I need a group that I can pour this into, and you're not gonna be saying, I'm ready, I'm ready for an esoteric group, I'm ready for a group of people who are ready to create on a whole nother level and see the power and the anointing of God where we make God public, where we take God public with signs, wonders, and miracles and see the power of God. Now let's go to, let's go, let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark 16. Let's go to Mark 16. I want you to put this in your notes and you can go back and look at it. 
the Bible says, and these signs, so the oil is a sign, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs, signs shall follow the believer. We're not following signs. Signs are following us. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we don't, we don't follow signs. Signs follow, okay. Let's go over there because some of y'all, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's for the preacher. Let's go over there. Now, some of y'all say, I know the scripture. No, you don't know the scripture because you're still looking for signs. Signs should follow you. You should just look behind you and say, hello, signs. One that's looking for stuff to follow you because you are the believer. Mark 16, look at verse 15. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. He that believe it, he that believe it. He, did, he didn't say he that's an apostle, he that preach, he that... He, he that prophesied, he that believeth, and I've got a problem with people who say they're believers, and I don't see any true mark of a believer is that they operate in signs. He says, and, and he says, believe, and if baptized you shall not uh, be damned, and these signs, and these signs shall follow them that believe, not preach, that believe. So you can have pastors who are not believers because the mark of a believer according to jesus now if you got a problem with this you got to take it up with jesus he says the mark of a believer is that signs follow them don't tell me you believe god and you believe in jesus and none of this follows you oh oh you got a problem take it up with it don't bring in your religion or your tradition don't talk about no signs and wonders and miracles are not for the day come on it's too late i've already seen uh people heal raise from the dead limbs grow eyes pop up already i've already seen stage four cancer heal too late to tell me that right he says, to them believe in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpent, serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, the Bible says that after that, the Lord spoke unto them. He was received into heaven, sat at the right hand of the Father. That means he sat at the, the authority of the Father. The right hand of the Father is the authority of the Father because God's throne is mobile. And, and the Bible says in verse 20, and they went forth preaching, preaching, and the Lord working with them and confirming and confirming the word with signs and confirming the word with signs and confirming the words with signs. Let's go to Acts. Come on. Oh, I'm, I'm going to give you scripture so, so you can't say. I am on Toto Mashkada. Look at Acts 14. Let's let no let, let's stop at let's stop at Acts 2. Let's stop at Acts 2. Acts 2 verse 43. Come on. Acts 2 verse 43. Uh, let's go to 41. The Bible says. The Bible says that uh, in Acts 1, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come. But if you back up to Matthew 10, they had already received power from Jesus. So why is the same disciples in the upper room receiving more power if they already had the power to cast out demons, heal uh, leprosy, and all kinds of the disease? The Bible says he gave them power to, to cleanse and to heal all kinds of diseases. Now they're in the upper room to get something else. Because what they had was in them, but now they need the impartation of the Holy Ghost and a oneness to do what God is calling. The Spirit of God is coming upon them now. Oh, they had a portion of Jesus' power. Now they're getting the Holy Ghost in his fullness. And the Bible says in verse 41 that... 3,000 souls were added to the church. That's an anointing. That's a sign. The Bible says that they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and breaking up bread and prayer. And fear came upon them. Fear came upon them. And, the, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Don't tell me you're an apostle and you don't have any signs or wonders. The mark of a true apostle is they operate operate in signs and wonders. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go to Acts 5. Acts 5. Come on. I, I hope you're writing this down. Acts 5. Don't take my word for it. Go back and read it because some of y'all don't even have your Bible. Acts 5. Let's go. And, and, great, and, and by the hands of the apostles, 
by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Signs and wonders. This is the first church is birthed in signs and wonders. And we can't even, we have not even matched the first church. We have not even, we, we, we can't even catch up to the first church. We are so behind the first church. We are praying for signs and wonders. And they got in one accord, in one place, waited on the Holy Ghost, came out, 3,000 got saved. Then the Bible says 5,000. And we see that by the hands of the apostle, not just that you got a, a, a something on your wall talking about you're an apostle and got a network and it's powerless. Come on. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If we're going to have biblical results, we have to adhere to biblical principles. Can y'all take a little bit more? Go to second. Go go to go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Twelve. Twelve. Second Corinthians. Twelve. Twelve. We're not playing in this hour. The problem with us is we keep watering down the message. We keep watering down the message to make you feel good, giving you feel good messages to tickle your toes and make you shout. And you go home without any transformation, any power. We have watered it down because we are scared of walking in the supernatural. We're scared of the demonic when we should have authority over the demonic because we have not had messages. And those that would drop kick us to the place where God called us, I got to get off of here. The power of God and the anointing of God. The Bible says that. At the sign of a true apostle in and second Corinthians 12 12 now now uh, it says truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you all in patience in signs and wonders one translation said the sign of a true apostle were performed among you with perseverance by signs wonders and miracles and some of you said why would God give us signs that was the principal protocol of the first church. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Not just great preaching. This is what Jesus' ministry consists of. Teaching, preaching, and demonstrating. Teaching, preaching, and demonstrating. Teaching, preaching, and demonstrating. That is the mark of Jesus' ministry. Teaching, preaching, and demonstrating. He always demonstrated what he preached. Words were walking. I hope some of y'all get that. My words are walking to you tonight. Now, if you got problems with that, I want you to back all the way up to Genesis and I'm through. The Bible says in Genesis that Adam, after Adam and Eve, after they partook of the tree, the Bible says that they heard the voice. Let's go over there. Because some of you misquote that scripture. Some of you said that God was walking in the cool of the day. Let's see what happens. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. Genesis Three, verse 8 Genesis 3 verse 8 and the I and they heard they heard the voice of the Lord God God was not walking in the garden they heard the voice they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden <laughs> Quote the scripture right. They heard the voice. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Are you hearing me? Let me give you one more and we throw. What can we do? Let's go to Acts 4.30. I love this one. Acts 4.30. Acts 4.30. This is the first church. If we were, we're behind the first church. Tell me how, how apostolic your church is if it's not marked with signs and wonders and miracles. 
we must have a problem. Well, Nesbitt, you know, I'm reading scripture. This is our instruction book. Let's look at verse, let's look at, um, let's look at verse 29. For a whole season, this was what the Lord had me meditating on until these words got in my spirit. He says, and now the Lord said, the Lord said, behold, they're threatened and grant thy sir unto thy servant with all boldness that they may speak your word, that I may speak your word. Some of you say, you're so bold. I had to meditate on this scripture until boldness dropped into my spirit because I was very, I was very, very shy. I was very, very uh, intimidated, intimidated by of speaking. And I had to, I meditated on this scripture for almost a year until boldness dropped down into me. And he says, that I may speak your word. Give me boldness that I may speak your word. Look what he says. And by stretching forth your hand to heal, that signs and wonders. He, he says, now stretch forth your hand to my hand, that signs and wonders may be done by the holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. Do you see? You have to say something. Stop begging God. The place was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. There is a fresh oil coming up on you tonight to do amazing things. You have to open your mouth. Negate the world you have created. Uh, ask for recompense for that which you've lost. The enemy has kept you in time cycles and patterns to keep you from receiving the fullness of what God has. And the oil has come with a freshness. There is a fresh oil for the body of Christ to move into this next season in God. And don't be left out because you don't believe in the supernatural. Everything about your salvation is supernatural. And I decree, Apostle Kimmy is on, I decree by the, by the power of the Holy Ghost that that fresh oil, he said that the oil of the horn of God will come upon you, that you will receive the fresh oil. Anoint my head with oil. That oil, that freshness that will come upon you from mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. That transformation, healing, and deliverance will come. I want you to decree that fresh oil comes, that you begin to feel, sense, and know that something different has happened in your life. I decree it, I declare it, I mandate it, and I legislate it in your life. I decree it's coming now in power and authority. Receive it by faith and watch God do supernatural things in your life. Start decreeing for the next 72 hours. We still have a thousand faith on a thousand. We have to have that thousand people with testimonies. Come on. We're up almost to 500. We need the rest of you to push in to get your testimonies going. And God is going to be doing phenomenal things. We had a, we prophesied to a woman about some contracts in, in 48 hours. She had $46,000 in contracts that she did not previously have. God is doing amazing, amazing things. Decree it, declare it. The Bible says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. My words are walking to you. Will you receive them in Jesus' name? I'll be with the Lavenders 
um, this weekend, Saturday at 11. Then I'll be in, in Baltimore, Maryland next week with the full gospel uh, convention or networks there. It's going to be phenomenal. Then August 10th, I'll be back in Plano. And don't forget to go ahead and register for our Supernatural Summit. You don't want to miss it. I promise you. Y'all got to play this again. Listen to it again. I said some heavy things that it's going to take your spirit to get. Uh, yeah, yeah. one of our church members got $25,000 since Sunday. Uh, unexpectedly showed me the check Monday night. Uh, showed, me the, yeah, showed me the check. She got the, She received it in the mail. She didn't previously know she was getting it. A man received $25,000. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yes, Crystal. Crystal says she received the words. She received my words. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. God is doing for now. I've been anointed and deputized to take you to places that you have not previously gone. Receive it by faith. Receive it, Dr. A. Bear. Receive it. Receive it for that transition and for that abundance. And you're going to watch God do some amazing things. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to see you next week. Uh, unless the Lord tell me to come on Saturday morning because we're going to be back in prayer. Oil still flowing. The oil is still flowing. People still have oil in their hands, still flowing. And you're going to, matter of fact, Stephanie and some of the ones came by the church today. Oil is still flowing, still flowing. Bless you. Love you. Supernatural family. Living supernatural life is living in faith every day. Go ahead and manifest in Jesus' name.